Well, well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining this uh, launch of the recommended list for 2022-23. My name is Paul Gosling, and I am the manager of the recommended list program here at the AHDB. Um, but sitting behind me is a is a big team, and I'm certainly not an expert in any of the parts of the of the um, RL. Uh, there are two teams really within the um, main RL team. We've got the field team who are out there. Uh, managing the trials. All our trials are done by uh, contractors. So they manage the trial program. They inspect the trials, not just the recommended list trials, but also the national list trials, and they validate all the data that comes in. And that's Mark uh, Bollebacker, Sean Burns, and Sarah Jane Osborne. Then back in the office, we have the data team, uh, Diana Flower, Kat Hales, uh, Georgia Hassel, and Ellie Marshall. And they're responsible for turning all the data that comes in from the trials um, into uh, data tables, which our crop committees use to make the variety of selections. And they also produce all the publications, so the physical publications and the virtual publications. And then Catherine Harris and her team, not strictly part of the RL team, uh, they're part of the uh, crop health and IPM team at HDB. Uh, they produce all the disease ratings uh, that go into the, to the um, booklet and the recommended list. And of course, uh, the recommended list programme is a consortium between ourselves, BSPB, MAGB and UK flour millers. And we couldn't produce the recommended list without their help. Uh, they produce an awful lot of data for us, uh, for testing. It goes into making variety of decisions and also into the booklet itself. So just start with a short summary of, of 2022. Um, we had Pretty good conditions back in autumn 2021, if you remember, and that's all most of our trials established well. Winter oilseed rape suffered much less from drought and carry stem flea beetle in the recent years. So we had a good set of trials going into the spring right across the country. We did then, of course, have that very hot and very dry summer. We expected yields to suffer, um, but actually, like uh, in most um, commercial crops, apart from winter barley, we saw very good yields and indeed. A um, exceeded the five year averages uh, pretty much across the board apart from winter barley. So, uh, quite an odd year, but in the end, we had some good trials, a little bit of variability in some droughty trials that we had to um, drop out of the data matrix, but generally a good data set this year. So, what I'm going to do, if, if um, for those of you that haven't attended one of these launches before, I'll go through the new recommendations crop by crop. Um, it is an informal presentation. Please feel free to stop me at any point and ask a question about the variety uh, or varieties, about the trial system about, or the recommendation system. Um, hopefully I'll be able to answer the question, but if not, a lot of the team are here lurking in the background today, so they should be able to answer any questions. So do please feel free to ask any questions at any point. We're so going to start with all seed rate recommendations. Uh, some highlights from the oilseed rape for 23-24. Fewer new varieties than last year. We did put a lot of new varieties on last year, so about half the number this year is last year, and I'm sure that will please some people out there. We've got some large yield increases um, with new winter oilseed rape varieties in the north, and some modest yield gains in, in the east and west region. We've got a new conventional winter oilseed rape variety that edges the yield performance higher. We did change the system for recommendation or tweaked it slightly um, last year to make it easier for conventional varieties to get onto the list because we recognise it is an important part of the market and it did look like they were going to disappear from the list. So we have tweaked it and now we have several new varieties on the list um, or several varieties on the list and we think we should be able to maintain those important conventional varieties on the list now. Um, and not many entries on the, the descriptive list this year either. So I'm going to start um, with what I call the general purpose varieties. Again, for those of you that haven't um, been to one of these presentations before, there'll be lots of tables, lots of data. It's a bit dry, I'm afraid, um, but um, I'll try and make it as interesting as possible as I go along. So we've got um, five new uh, hybrids and one conventional um, general purpose varieties, as I call them. So I think the top Turing is a hybrid from LSPB. Now Turing hasn't actually been added to the national list yet, um, but we have been permission given permission to share the data by AFA. Uh, it will go onto the national list on the 19th of December, provided no representations are received. What that effectively means is it's passed all the tests for um, 
the US um, distinct, is distinct, uniform and stable, and for VCU, the value for cultivation and use tests, it's, it will go on providing no complaints and says actually this shouldn't go on for whatever reason, but we expect it to be listed on the 19th of December. We then have Attica, another hybrid uh, from, from Lima going with a UK recommendation, Vegas again from LSPV with a UK recommendation, Murray from LSPV just with an east-west recommendation, and then LG Wagner, or Wagner depending on your point of view, uh, from Lima Grain with a north recommendation, and then the conventional variety uh, Tom, uh, that's going to be marketed by Frontier, and that has a UK recommendation. Varieties coming off this list this year are Artemis, Darling, Dazzler, Aardvark, Blazon, Cruiser, Nizza, and PX138. We then have a new specialist variety. Um, it's what we call variety tolerant to specific herbicides, uh, what most people call clearfield varieties, and that's Beatrix CL from DSV, and that just has a north recommendation. As I said, there'll be lots of tables of data this year, um, or, or, as, as in previous years. And the way these tables work is we have the new varieties highlighted in bold, and then what we do is we compare them to some current varieties on the list. These varieties are generally uh, comparative varieties, that is varieties that uh, committees use to compare the new varieties against, but I will occasionally throw in a, an alternative variety, sometimes a market leader or for some other reason, um, but I'll, I'll explain that as I go along. So, um, Starting on the left-hand side with Turing. Turing um, is recommended for very high yield. It's got an east-west gross output of 107%, a north gross output of 107%, which is well above uh, our, uh, our comparators. And also Auckland, uh, which is the highest yielding uh, variety current on the current recommended list. Stem difference is good at an eight. Uh, medium maturity at a five. Stem canker perhaps a little bit weak uh, at a five. A good light leaf spot. Uh, doesn't have turnip yellow to virus resistance or pod shatter resistance, which now is a little bit unusual for um, hybrid varieties, and it, it may put some growers off despite the high yield. Second variety is Attica from Lima Grain, again yielding 107% in the east west and the north region, so a big step forward, particularly in the north, um, compared with Ambassador, Averon, and Auckland. Stem stiffness like Turing is an eight. Similar with um, early maturity to five. It does have better stem canker, the seven, the light leaves, but also seven. And unlike Turing, it has resistance to turning yellow virus and pot and shutter resistance. So that for some people may give it the edge over Turing. Vegas is the other of these new varieties um, from LSPB. 106% in the east west, so not quite that they were Turing and Attica, but ahead of uh, most of the current varieties. North gross output 103%, so not quite so strong in the north, uh, similar to Ambassador, Avron and Auckland. Eight for stem stiffness, early to maturity is a five like the other new varieties. That's nine for stem canker, which is obviously very strong, um, particularly for growers in the east and west, and also eight for light leaf spots. So generally uh, good disease ratings for Vegas. Sadly, it doesn't have turning yellow to our resistant, resistance or pod shatter. I guess it's one of those situations where which is the trait you're looking for most, the high disease resistance or the pod shatter and the turning yellow to virus resistance. Now in the, in the presentation, we have um, the variety comments. I'm not going to go to the variety comments um, because um, they will it'll take us all day. They are in the um, information you receive as part of the press relief, um, so you'll be able to see those all, although I'm not going to go through them during the presentation. Then moving on to uh, a general purpose variety recommended just for the East and West, and that's Murray. Again, I'm using the same comparators, our two official comparators, Ambassador and Averon, and the highest yielding variety on the old list, Auckland. And I've greyed out the, the UK and the North output um, because obviously it's just recommended for the East and West. So Murray is 106% um, in the East and West, just ahead of Ambassador and Averon and similar level to Auckland. Stem stiffness is eight, um, so good. Uh, but almost, almost as good as Ambassador and better than Everon and Auckland. Earliness and maturity again is a five, so medium. Good disease rating with stem canker is an eight. Lightly spotted to seven. But like the other varieties we saw, um, doesn't have um, turnip yellow to virus resistance or pod shatter resistance, which may be an issue um, for some people. 
And then we come to our new general purpose variety recommended just for the north. This is LG Wagner um, from Lima Grain. And here I'm comparing it to Aurelia, which is the highest yielding of the current varieties on the, on the north list. And also it's the most widely grown variety um, in our planting survey. And as you can see um, from the north field, um, for Wagner, it is a significant step forward in it compared to anything else um, on the list. It will be 4% higher than anything on the list. For the north region, 108%. So I'm sure this is a variety that's going to catch the attention of growers in the north. Stem difference is good at an eight. Shortness of stem is six, same as Aurelia and Avaron. Again, it's an early uh, middling maturity at a five. Stem canker is a little bit lower to six, but for northern growers, that's possibly less of an in, uh, interest. And it does have a seven for light leaf spot. Also, it has a, a light leaf spot, has turnip yellow to virus resistance and pod shadow resistance. So an all round variety uh, with a very high yield increase compared to the current varieties. So as I say, I'm sure that's going to be of interest to growers in the north. Again, I'll skip over um, the uh, variety comments. So now moving to our new um, general purpose conventional variety, Tom, and from C, uh, bred by CBI, um, but it will be uh, marketed in the UK by Frontier. Here I'm comparing it to, to uh, Acacia, um, which is um, a highest yielding variety, conventional variety on the list, and also Campus. Campus isn't on the list anymore. It hasn't been for a number of years, but it is still very widely grown. It's the fifth most widely grown variety of conventional or hybrid, according to our, our, our um, planting survey. Uh, so I've got campus on there as a, as a comparator. So East West growth sample of Tom is 102 percent. It's just one percent higher than Acacia, so a, a marginal increase, um, but three percent ahead of, of campus. In the north, its yield is bracketed. That means limited data, but it does look like it's an improvement over Acacia and about the same as campus. Campus does very well in the north. So Tom, um, an incremental increase in yield for a conventional variety, um, but we know we need to keep these conventional varieties coming into the list and it will be the highest yielding um, conventional variety on the list. Very stiff, uh, of a nine for stem stiffness. Uh, shortness of stem is, is medium to the six. And again, early to maturity to the five, so sitting in the middle there. Stem canker is a six, so the same as Acacia and Campus. A likely spot is a seven, so better than both Acacia and Campos. And like all these um, three varieties, probably two varieties, it doesn't have turnip yellow spiral resistant to pod shatter. Many of the commercial varieties don't possess these traits. Some do, um, certainly turnip yellow spiral resistance, though none of the conventional varieties have pod shatter resistance. It does seem to be more difficult to get these newer traits into conventional varieties, um, but they are starting to come in slowly. So finally, uh, to Beatrix uh, CL, this is one of our clear field varieties now. Um, I'll compare it to Matrix here, which is our comparative variety. It's also the highest yielding um, clear field variety in the north. So uh, Beatrix, northern growth output is, is bracketed, so it's limited data. It's 1% below uh, Matrix. Stem stiffness is the same as Matrix. Shortness of stem is the same as Matrix. It's a little bit later uh, than Matrix. Uh, lower stem canker and the same light leaf spot, and both varieties have turnip yellow to virus resistance and pod shatter resistance. Uh, they're both um, D DSV varieties. Um, why, why was Beatrix recommended? Um, largely because there appears to be a gap in the market in the north. Um, Beatrix will be a lot higher yield than any other variety apart from Matrix in the north. And there was a concern uh, that there wasn't enough Matrix seed available um, to fulfil the requirements for clear varieties in the north. And so uh, Beatrix was recommended to fill that gap. So that's our winter oil seed rape. Um, in summary, new hybrid varieties for the UK and the regions offering high yields. A new conventional variety for the UK offering high yield. I say we want, want to make sure we keep those conventional varieties on the list because we know they are an important part of the seed market. Lots of growers want to grow them. A big increase in potential yield for the north from those hybrid varieties. And a new herbicide tolerant variety for the north, offering more choice for growers in the north. Just a, one slide about our described oilseed list. This is spring linseed and, and spring oilseed rape. In terms of the spring linseed list, we've just got two new varieties, both early and maturing varieties, which will be attractive to growers. 
Olympic and Gilbert. There's something else to mention about the spring linseed list. We are now reporting information on the alpha linoleic, linoleic acid content um, on, the, on the spring linseed deal. This was something that was requested by the breeders. It's cost us very little to do. Um, and there may be premiums available for varieties high in alpha linoleic acid, but obviously anyone growing um, those needs to speak to a uh, growing merchant um, to find out actually will they get the premiums and which varieties might have those premiums. Spring oil seed rate, uh, no new varieties added, uh, so nothing uh, to tell you about that. So that was the, um, the oil seed rate, but now I'm going to move on to cereals. And we're going to start with barley. Before I start talking about the new varieties, just something about uh, Rhynchosporium in spring barley. We've had issues with Rhynchosporium ratings in spring barley in the last couple of years. A dry springs in recent years have resulted in small data sets uh, for calculating the ratings. That has meant we have had some doubt over the ratings for the new varieties, where we don't have many years data. Last year, we recommended some varieties with a, with a bracketed Rhynchosporium rating, which are actually below our minimum standard. Um, these were recommended because it, it didn't seem fair to exclude them from the list on the basis of a Rhynchosporium rating, which we weren't confident on. For the 2023-24 list, there is more data available to calculate ratings. So the new ratings are more robust, and those varieties last year that were below minimum standard now have higher ratings and all are, all are above minimum standard uh, for Rhynchosporium. So it was the right decision last year to, to recommend those varieties uh, below minimum standard for Rhynchosporium. This year's ratings uh, should be much more robust. Moving then on to the, the barley recommendations, I'm going to start with winter barley. Um, highlights, uh, a new malting variety recommended for the UK. That is the first time that's happened since 2018. Uh, we don't uh, get those very often. We have two new two-row feed varieties recommended for the UK and a six-row hybrid with a good balance of features, including a very high Rhynchosporium resistance rating. So starting with a two-row malting variety, that variety is Buccaneer from Saturn Union. Obviously, it's still under test. Uh, whether it makes the grade of the brewing variety will be up to the maltsters once they see it in volume, but at the moment, it looks like it has the qualities required for a brewing, brewing variety. We have removed some varieties this year, KWS Gimlet, Flynn, Jordan and Cresswell. So looking at Buccaneer in a bit more detail, as I say, it's still under test. So uh, before growers commit to this variety, they need to make sure they have a market for it. But it does look at this stage like a pr very promising variety. I'm comparing it here to Kraft and Electrum, obviously two other uh, malting winter bodies on the list. Kraft is by far the dominant of the two, about 45% uh, of, of the winter barley. Um, Electrum has a small part of the market. Um, East Yield of Buccaneer, 101%, so a long way ahead of Kraft and Electrum. West Yield is bracketed, so that's limited data. On that limited data, it looks like it's, it's about the same as Electrum, a little bit ahead of Kraft. And the North Yield, again bracketed, so limited data, but a big increase in yield over both Kraft and Electrum. In terms of grain quality, it uh, looks very similar to the comparators. Specific weight are just behind both Kraft and Electrum. Screenings, the same as Kraft, just behind Electrum. And lodging looks very similar to the comparatives. It is a little bit later, uh, certainly in Electrum, um, uh, and a little bit later than Kraft, uh, but certainly not a, a problem with a plus one. Disease ratings, mildew is a six, uh, so middling, but the same as Kraft and Electrum. We don't have any brown rust ratings for the new uh, winter barley this year. That again is because of lack of data, um, there's too much, too little uh, to produce a rating. Rhynchosporium for Buccaneer though is good at a seven, so that's uh, better than Kraft and two points better than Electrum. And the net blotch, again, it's bracketed, so limited data, but at a six, um, it looks better than Kraft and Electrum. And those um, good disease ratings come through the untreated yield, 87% uh, uh, compared to 79% for both Kraft and Electrum. So Buccaneer is a really interesting variety, big increase in treated yield, big increase in untreated yield, uh, good grain quality. We'll have to see what the, the maltsters make of it when they get it in volume. But fingers crossed, 
a variety that's going to uh, make a, a, a big dent in the market. Then move on to uh, the feed varieties. We've got three, uh, LG Caravel, a two row of the UK recommendation from Lima Grain. Bolivia, a two row recommendation uh, from Agri, with the UK recommendation. And SY Nefin, a six row hybrid with the UK recommendation from Syngenta. So I'll treat the two rows and, and, and the hybrid six row different separately. So here we're comparing them with, with TARDIS and, and Lightning. TARDIS is the highest yielding of the current varieties. Lightning is the third highest yielding, and they are both official comparators which the committees use um, to compare the new varieties against. But I should say that um, Bolivia, um, distributed by Agri, uh, but bred by Nordic Seed of Denmark. So comparing the new varieties, LG Caravel to start with, it's East Yield. 109% well ahead of TARDIS and Lightning. So a big, big step forward in terms of yield with Caravel. Indeed, Caravel was, was recommended automatically um, on the basis of its yield and the fact that it met all the um, minimum standards and, um, and comparator requirements. Uh, West Yield is bracketed for Caravel, 105%, um, but well ahead of TARDIS and Lightning. And again, the North Yield is bracketed, so again, limited data. Um, but ahead of Lightning and TARDIS. So looking like a very strong yield package for Caravelle. Grain quality looks good as well, specific weight of 71.8, so uh, well above uh, KWS TARDIS and well above Lightning. Lodging looks okay at a seven, so between Lightning and TARDIS, and Lightning, all these four varieties are the same at a nought. Mildew looks good at a seven, so certainly better than TARDIS. Uh, Brown rust, as I've already said, uh, we haven't got any ratings for these new varieties because I've got very limited data. Rig Sporib is six, so same as TARDIS, just behind Lightning. And Net Blotch is a bracketed figure, so limited data at a five. That would make it the same as TARDIS and Lightning. And it looks like it's got pretty good disease resistance package because it comes up with an untreated yield of, of 89. And Lightning was recommended last year, particularly because of its good disease resistance. It has an untreated uh, yield of 90%. Moving on into Bolivia, Bolivia is not quite as high yielding uh, as Caravelle, but still does well. 105% in the east, to the same as TARDIS and better than Lightning. 104% in the west, though it's bracketed, but that's 2% ahead of both Lightning and, and TARDIS. And in the north, uh, bracketed 102%, so not quite as strong in the north, same as TARDIS and a percent less than the Lightning. So variety particularly uh, strength is in the west. Grain yield is fine, 70.2% specific, specific weight, uh, just behind TARDIS, but ahead of Lightning. And strong lodging performance with an eight, so equal to TARDIS and 2%, two points ahead of Lightning. As I said, Lightning are always the same. Mildew is a seven, uh, so better than TARDIS, the same as Lightning. No brown rust. Brink spoiling is a six. Uh, net blotch is a bracketed six as well. And those decent disease re resistance ratings come through in that untreated yield of 89%. Moving on now to a, a new six row feed variety from Syngenta, SY Nefin. Here I'm comparing it with, with Thunderbolt, which is currently the highest yielding on the list, and Canyon that was recommended last year because of its good grain quality and disease resistance. Uh, Canyon also has the highest untreated yield on the list. So coming back to Nefin, um, East yield of 106%, these hybrids, six row hybrids now, most of them are pretty similar on, on, on treated yield. Um, in the East, they're all pretty much around 106%. Nefin um, in the West, 103%. It's well below uh, both Thunderbolt and Canyon. I don't think it's a variety that's going to be uh, picked up much in the West, but it, it, it is bracketed, so that may come up. Of course, it may go down as well. And in the North, 105%, so similar to Thunderbolt and Canyon. In terms of specific weight, it's good for a six row hybrid, 71.4, uh, better than Thunderbolt, very similar to Canyon. And lodging is a little bit better than Canyon and Thunderbolt, the six, which would be welcome to those growing six row hybrids. Ripening, uh, it's a little bit later than Thunderbolt, same as Canyon. Uh, disease resistance is okay, a six for mildew, so just behind Canyon and Thunderbolt. Again, no brown rust ratings. 
but it does have an eight for ring spoiler and that will make it the only variety both two row or six row on the winter buyer list with an eight for ring spoiler and that will be a big bonus uh, for some growers who, who have issues with ring spoiler Annette Blotch is a bracketed five, so limited data. Um, and that, that good disease resistance package comes through in the untreated yield at 90%, what just 1% behind Canyon, that will make it um, one of the highest yeah, untreated yields for the 6 0 hybrids on the list. So that's the end of the winter barley recommendations. Now moving on to the, the spring barley recommendations. And for any of you that are, are variety experts out there, you may think well, that's not a spring barley variety. It isn't, it's actually craft, um, but I couldn't find a nice picture of spring barley, um, so that is the best I can manage. So highlights for spring barley. Um, just a, a word of caution. Um, all of last year's P1 malting varieties have failed to progress through the MBC testing system for various reasons. And it is important that when growers are looking at these new P1 varieties, they make sure they have to, uh, some of they can sell the varieties. They are still under test, um, by the MBC, if they don't make the grade, um, they may struggle to find a market. So um, just a word, of, a word of warning. But having said that, we have three new malting varieties under test for brewing. We have two new malting varieties under test for both brewing and malt distilling, and one new variety under test for malt distilling only. We also have a new feed barley variety with very high treated yield. So these are our new spring barley varieties. Um, at the top, so from the top, Florence, and the test for brewing. That comes from Sonova and has a UK recommendation. Sun King, um, again, a brewing variety from, um, it's gonna be available from Agri, but it's bred by Sacobra. It'll have a UK uh, recommendation. SY Signet uh, for brewing, a UK recommendation from Syngenta. And SY Tennyson, uh, under test for brewing and malt distilling from Syngenta, re recommended for the UK. KWS Curtis, brewing malt distilling from KWS uh, with a UK recommendation. And Diviner, again from Sucubra, um, distributed through Agri. That's a UK recommendation. Uh, it's under test for malt distilling. And then Hurler, it's a, a feed variety in this section. Uh, again from Sucubra, distributed by Agri uh, with a UK recommendation. And I uh, just wanted to point out that these are the first um, um, of barley varieties to come from Sucobra's new UK breeding program. Um, obviously, they're doing something right. Uh, three varieties on the new list, um, but they're all being distributed to Agri. Removed from the spring barley list this year, Jensen, Bronte, Spinner, SY Tunks and SY Splendor. And those varieties all failed to progress uh, through the NBC testing system and also removed as being failing. So I'll start with the new varieties um, under test for brewing. These are Florence, Sun King and Signet. And I'm comparing them here to Planet and Laureate. Planet and Laureate, obviously, by far the most dominant varieties um, in this brewing sector. Laureate has more than 55% of the market and Planet has about 18% and all that 18% for Planet is, is in England. So coming back to Florence, uh, yield in the east, 106%. Uh, 3% ahead of Laureate and 7% uh, ahead of Planet, so a big yield improvement. Yield in the West is bracketed, so limited data, but 106%, so again, uh, well ahead of Laureate and Planet. Yield in the North, not quite so strong, 104%, uh, but still 2% ahead of, of, of Laureate and 5% ahead of Planet. Pacific weight is good, 68.2, uh, not quite as high as Planet, but ahead of Laureate. And lodging bracketed. For the cereals this year, pretty much all the um, lodging ratings are bracketed. Uh, it hasn't been a lodging year, as you'd imagine. So most of the varieties come, uh, look like they're resi resistant to lodging, but there is a word of caution. It is based on limited data. We'll have to see what they really look like once we get some, some good lodging data. Uh, so I'll say bracketed data, limited data for lodging. But it does have good brackling resistance, the nine, and ripening. It, it's relatively early, um, earlier than laureate and the same as planet. Mildews you'd expect from a spring barley is strong at an eight. Brown rust is a five, so the same as the comparative. A rinkosporium, uh, again, a bracketed figure. I said we, we have had issues with rinkosporium in spring barley. All the new varieties are bracketed, um, but we are more confident of those ratings than we were last year. 
and that puts it the same as planet and, and just one below lower it. Untreated yield, uh, based on those good disease resistance um, figures, at 95%, so ahead of Laureate and well ahead of Planet. We then have Sun King. Sun King's yield in the east, 104%, so just ahead of Laureate, well ahead of Planet. Looks very strong in the west at 107%, but that, that is bracketed, uh, so it is based on limited data that will put it 4% ahead of Laureate and 9% uh, ahead of Planet. But as I say, we'll see what that looks like when we have more data. North yield again, not quite as strong, but still ahead of Laureate and Planet. And specific weight uh, sits between the two comparators, um, not as good as Planet, but better than Laureate. Again, a suggested strong lodging score of eight, but it's bracketed, uh, but strong on Brackley again, like Florence, uh, and a nine for Brackley. A little bit lighter um, than Florence, but uh, same as Laureate. Mildew is a nine. Framos is, is stronger than a six, so better than Planet and Laureate. Might be a little bit on link ring spoiling with a four, but I so said that's bracketed, uh, so we're not sure exactly where that will finish up when we have more data. Then it's 96 for untreated yield, suggests uh, it does have a strong uh, disease resistance package. Finally, SY Signet, 105% um, in the east, um, so ahead of Planet and Laureate. In the west, bracketed, so limited data. Same as Laureate on that limited data, uh, but ahead of Planet. And this one is a bit stronger in the north, 105% uh, in the north, uh, so that's 3% ahead of Laureate and 6% ahead of Planet. Specific weight, um, like sinking, sits between the two comparators, ahead of Laureate, not as good as, as Planet. Again, that strong lodging score, um, bracketed, so um, not entirely confident that that's as high as it is. Uh, Brackling is an eight, so good, same as the comparators. Again, it's a plus one, so similar to Laureate on the ripening. Mildew is a nine. Brambos is a five, the same as the comparators. Rinkosporium, a bracketed five, so it looks a little bit weak in the comparators, but we'll see when we've got more data. But that 95% um, for untreated yield suggests it's a reasonable disease resistant package. Moving now on to varieties in, under test for brewing and malt distilling. And here I've switched the comparators around a bit. We've still got Laureate, but I brought in Diablo. because say Planet isn't really used in the north, um, but Diablo is, is a, a popular variety in Scotland with about 14% of the spring barley purchases in 2021. So the two new varieties are SY Tennyson and KWS Curtis. Um, Tennyson first, uh, East Yield, very strong, 107%. So 4% ahead of Laureate and 5% and ahead of Diablo. West Yield is bracketed, uh, so limited data, and that looks the same as Laureate and 3% ahead of Planet. And North Yield looks very strong, which obviously looking at the silly market is very useful. 106%, uh, so 4% ahead of Laureate and Diablo. Specific weight is maybe a little bit low, um, below both the comparisons, but it's certainly not a disastrous um, low. And lodging, as I said, the lodging figures are a little bit uh, under question because we've got very limited data. Um, it's bracketed seven, so it might be a little bit weaker on lodging than um, the variety we just looked at in the previous slide, um, but it's similar to Diablo and better than Laureate on that limited data. Brackley again, maybe a little bit weaker to seven, um, to just below um, Diablo and Laureate. Ripening is a plus one, um, so uh, the same as Laureate, and earlier than Diablo, which obviously isn't a problem in the north because Diablo is popular. Mildew is a nine, so with the comparators. Bramos is a, is a slightly uh, weaker four, which is one behind the comparators. Rinkosporium uh, is a three, um, bracketed, so we can't be certain of that rating, uh, but I would put it somewhere behind uh, Diablo and Laureate. And perhaps those low Bram, Rust and, and Rinkosporium scores are coming through in the untreated yield, so it's just at 92% which puts it the same as Diablo, uh, but less than Laureate. But remember, its treated yield is much higher than those, so it does look like it might be a little bit weaker on disease. KWS Curtis, is our other variety with malt and brewing, the distilling uh, potential. 105% in the east, uh, so not quite as strong as Tennyson, but ahead of Laureate and Diablo. Uh, West Shield is 103% bracketed, uh, which would make it just slightly below Laureate, but ahead of Diablo. And the North, not as, not as strong as Tennyson, 
but ahead of both planet, uh, sorry, ahead of both Laureate and Diablo. Specific weight, it sits between the two comparators, very similar to the comparators, and lodging uh, potentially an eight, uh, but bracketed with that limited data available. Brackling is an eight, so the same as the comparators, and ripening is the same as Laureate, uh, but earlier than Diablo. Mildew is a nine, as you'd expect from a spring barley. Brown rust is a five, the same as the comparators. Rinkosporium bracketed, uh, so limited data, but the same as Laureate, and uh, just ahead of uh, Diablo. And suggested from the untreated yield of 95%, ahead of Laureate and Diablo, it suggests it does that Rinkosporium rating will probably hold up. It looks like it has good disease resistance. Moving now on to our variety with malt distilling uh, potential only, uh, so not brewing potential, uh, that's Diviner. Uh, Diablo Laureate again. So looking at the East treated yield, uh, 104%, so ahead of Laureate, 2% uh, ahead of, of Diablo. West treated yield is bracketed, uh, so limited data looks like the same as Laureate, but well ahead of Diablo. And the North treated yield looks strong, which obviously for a malt distilling variety is important. That's 3% of Laureate and Diablo. Pacific weight looks good, uh, better than Laureate and almost identical to Diablo. And lodging, again, a bit of a question mark over that data, but at the moment it looks like it's got good lodging resistance. Brackling is also stronger than nine, and ripening is, is fine, the same as Laureate, but it's earlier than Diablo. Mildew and nine, brown rust of five, the same with the comparators. Again, Rinkosporium looks a little bit lower to three, but that is bracketed data. It may come up with more data, but at the moment it's looking um, quite a bit weaker than two comparators, and that's perhaps coming through in the untreated yield, which is the same as Diablo, but 2% lower than Laureate. And finally, um, in the spring barleys, the new feed variety Hurler um, from Sicobra, one of their three new varieties. Um, very strong on yield, east yield of 108%. That's higher than Skyway, which is currently the highest yielding spring barley of any variety of type, uh, malting or feed. Indeed, um, the hurler will be 2% higher than um, any variety in any region on the new list. It's also 5% uh, um, higher than Prospect, which is one of the feed varieties on the list used as a comparator. West yield 108%, it's bracketed. 2% higher than Skyway and 6% higher than Prospect. And the North Yield, 106%, so 4% higher than Skyway and 5% um, higher than, than Prospect. And as I say, it will be 2% higher yield than any other spring barley variety on the new list. So a big step forward in yield. Specific weight is maybe a slight weakness, 66.2, so quite a bit behind Prospect and Skyway. But it does look very strong on lodging. And even given the, the caveat about there not being much data to come out with a nine for lodging, uh, two ahead of Skyway and Prospect. Also, it's very strong on Brackling, uh, stronger than, than Skyway, um, similar to Prospect. And in terms of ripening, the same as our two comparators here. Mildew, as you'd expect, very strong to an eight. A little bit weaker on Brownless, maybe with a four, but that's the same as Skyway. And the Rinkosporium rating is limited data, but it's a bracketed six. So that will put it just below Skyway and Prospect. In terms of untreated yield, very similar to Skyway, um, ahead of Prospect. But it's really the treated yield um, where, where Hurler is, is, is getting um, a big advantage over the current varieties, whether they're malting or feed. The spring barley summary. Uh, new spring barley varieties on the test for brewing, improved yield and good agronomics. New varieties on the test for brewing and malt distilling with high yield, especially in the north, which is important for that, that malt distilling uh, market. And new spring variety on the test just for malt distilling with again high yield in the north. And that finally, that spring variety, uh, feed variety with exceptionally high treated yield across all the regions. As I said at the start, and I'll re emphasize it here, those new varieties under test for, for brewing and malt distilling. They are still under test. Um, people committing to grow them should speak um, to the, the, the end user to find out actually will they have a market for those um, at the end of the year. Moving on now to our oat recommendations. 
We just got two new oats this year, a winter oat, a Cromwell, it's a husk variety from Sonova with the UK recommendation. And we've just removed one variety uh, from the winter oat list, RGT lineout. In spring oats, RGT Vaughan, obviously from RGT. Um, a husk variety again with a UK recommendation. And we've removed WPB, LEN and Yukon from that list. So starting with uh, the new winter oat variety, Cromwell. Um, I'm comparing it here to Southwark and Mascai. RGT Southwark is currently the highest yielding variety on the list, and Mascai is one of our official comparators uh, because of its quality. The market, of course, is dominated by Mascai. There was 70% of the winter oat market, uh, but Mascai was first recommended way back in 2004. We could really do with some um, new varieties to challenge that um, because its yield is now um, clearly well behind other varieties. But coming back to Cromwell, uh, UK treated yield is 102%, so it's not as high yielding Southern, but it's certainly well ahead of Muscani. Untreated yield, uh, again ahead of Muscani, uh, it's not well though with Southern. It does have good screenings, uh, better than um, Southern, uh, not as good as Muscani, uh, and it has very good specific weight, so 55.3, um, well ahead of, of Southwark and well ahead of Muscani, um, so really good specific weight for a winter oak variety. Kernel content is also good, um, well ahead of Southwark at 74.9, uh, not quite up with Muscani, but not far behind. Lodging, again, as with the, the barleys, uh, very limited lodging data, um, so these lodging ratings for the cereals really need to be uh, taken with a pinch of salt. Um, but it's looking like an eight at the moment, which would make it much better than Southwark and Muscani. But we really need more data to get a good idea of the lodging. In terms of ripening, uh, it's later than both uh, Southwark and Muscani, but not disastrously late. Mildew looks like a bit of a weakness with a three, so it's worse than Southwark and, 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 and Muscani. And crown rust, similar to Muscani, but not as strong as Southwark. So moving on to our new um, husk spring oak variety, RGT Vaughan, and here I'm comparing it to Canyon uh, and Isabel, WPB Isabel. Isabel is the market leader and Canyon is second, and they're both used as our official comparators by our committees. So looking at uh, UK treated yield, uh, 97%, so it's not as high yield as either Canyon or Isabel, and it's treated yield um, is not as high as, as Canyon, but it is better than Isabel uh, by 5%. So, kernel content is good, uh, 72.7, so well ahead of Canyon, and just behind Isabel. Screenings are also good, uh, best than Canyon, uh, not quite as good as Isabel. Specific weight is good, 52.2, so better than Canyon, and just behind Isabel again. Lodging, same co um, issues as before, bracketed sevens, so that, if that's correct, I'll put it around the same as Canyon and Isabel. Ripening, it's earlier than Isabel, same as Canyon, um, has good mildew resistance at eight, uh, same as Canyon, uh, similar but, but better than Isabel. Crown rust is maybe a little bit weak and bracketed for, so limited data, but that makes it very similar to the comparators that are four, with Canyon on, also on a four and Isabel on a five. In terms of our described cereal list, um, a few changes here. On the Rhine Triticale list, uh, winter rye, we've added one variety, KWS Iger, and several varieties have been removed from this SU Cassani, SU Mephisto, SU Nasri, Inspector, and Decato. The winter Triticale list, we've added just one variety, the Marco, which will be the highest yielding variety on the list, and we've removed Toro from the list. Moving on to wheat now. Um, I've got a few um, slides about uh, disease issues in wheat uh, before we get on to the, uh, the main part of, of the new recommendations. So, uh, first of all, winter wheat yellow rust seedling resistance. Uh, wheat adult plant resistance genes, the ones that um, become active in the, in the summer, only become active around stem extension. Um, young plant or seedling resistance is active all the way through the growth stages and relies on different genes. What that can mean is that the presence of yellow rust at T0 or even T1 does not necessarily mean adult plant resistance has failed. We often hear, particularly on, on, on um, social media, 
and, and the early part of, of the spraying season that people talking that a variety is, is broken down to yellow rust um, because it's it's got a high rating on the list but it seems to have a lot of yellow rust that may just be that those adult plant resistance genes haven't kicked in yet and, and the variety isn't resistant to the, the seedling it can cause some confusion uh, around those spray timings the recommended list tests the adult plant resistance it doesn't test the young or seedling resistance However, seedling resistance is tested by UK CPVS, and that data is reported on our website, um, but it's not that easy to find, uh, and it didn't, because it doesn't sit um, with the RL data, um, it's not always obvious um, what's going on with varieties. So what we've decided to do is we'll report the results of the seedling resistance testing by UK CPVS in the RL, so growers can see the adult plant resistance um, from, the, from the RL rating, and the young plant resistance side by side when they're making their um, decisions on management. So the varieties will be classed as either resistant or susceptible as, as young plants, we're not going to get a rating. However, uh, the UK CPPS test is conducted in the glass south with just five representative yellow rust isolates. And UK CPPS decide which are the most representative ones. Obviously we know the yellow rust population is hugely diverse out there, so there may be isolates which have not been tested that can overcome that seedling resistance. As a result, if the field data coming from RL trials shows that a variety that is, uh, is susceptible at the seedling stage, which the UK CPVS says is resistant, then we will override the UK CPVS result and, and call it susceptible, even though UK CPVS has called it resistant. There is one variety on this year's list which we have classified as susceptible, which UK CPVS has classified as resistant. So that's yellow rust. Uh, just an update on winter wheat septoria disease for this year. Uh, last year, we uh, produced two sets of disease ratings, using this, one using the standard three-year data set and one using one-year data set. The one-year data set was was used because it revealed the influence of the widespread occurrence of the septoria isolates virulent on cougar. Um, if you remember, the cougar resistant varieties seemed to start breaking down. They were having much more disease than expected, particularly in the, in the south of the UK. Um, so we decided to, to put those two um, different ratings side by side so you can see um, the impact of that cougar breakdown. It wasn't so evident in the three year because you're using three years of data and only one year of the breakdown. But for 2022, 20, sorry, 2023, 24, we've calculated a two-year data set. Um, so with both the years where we've seen the cougar impact and a three-year data set. However, when we looked at those side by side, the differences are actually very small. A three-year data set uh, captures almost the entire impact of cougar, and so we'll only publish the normal three-year data set for 23-24. Finally, um, on, on disease in, in wheat, uh, we have issues with eye spot. Um, there are eye spot rate, we only have a few trials um, to provide data for the eye spot ratings. We have two sorts of trials. They're either artificially inoculated with a number of representative isolates, or they're naturally infected by growing them in places where we expect to get eye spot, generally in the north and the west in a second week um, situation. However, over the last two years, the results from the inoculated and the naturally infected trials have diverged. So varieties which look resistant in the naturally infected trials, look more resistant in the, infect, uh, in the inoculated trials, and varieties that look um, more susceptible in the, in the inoculated trials, um, look resistant in the naturally infected. That makes producing rating very difficult. So for the 2023-24 recommended list, it's been decided to use only data from naturally infected trials to calculate the ratings. That decision was made because um, it's what farmers face in the field. It's the naturally occurring population that they're facing, not um, inoculated, uh, an inoculated population, even though that naturally, uh, those in inoculated trials are inoculated with isolates collected in the field. They are facing that complex um, that occurs naturally. That does mean, unfortunately, we have a small data set uh, for iSpot ratings this year. All the ratings are bracketed and should be treated with caution, particularly for the newer varieties uh, where we have uh, even less data. 
So moving on to the wheat recommendations. I'm going to start with winter wheat. So highlights for winter wheat. Um, we have one new group two milling wheat, uh, particularly with the high yield in the north. We have a new group three biscuit milling variety with good yield. Two new soft group four varieties, one for the east and west, and one just recommended for the north, and a new hard group four variety just recommended for the east and west. And there, these are our new varieties. Uh, so from KWS, we have KWS Ultimatum, our new group two um, with a UK recommendation. Our new group three, RGT Wilkinson um, from RAGT uh, with a UK recommendation. Then we have LG Redwald, a new soft group four from Lima Grain. That just has an east and west recommendation. We then have KWS Zealand, also a, hot, a soft group four. That just has a north recommendation. And finally, Oxford from DSV, a hard group four with just an east and west recommendation. Varieties coming off the list this year, KWS Barrel, KWS Kerrin, LG Spotlight and RGT Gravity. So I'll start with a new UK FM Group 2, and that's KWS Ultimatum. And this slide has just got yield and quality. I'll look at disease um, on the next slide. So here we're comparing with KWS Xdays and Palladium. These are our official comparators. Obviously, KWS Xdays has been around the world. It's the highest yielding of the Group 2s. And KWS Palladium was recommended last year, uh, particularly for its, um, its good disease resistance. So, um, in the east, um, ultimatum is 101%, so it's uh, ahead of palladium and 1% below X stage. In the west, it's 102%, so the same as X stage and 1% ahead of palladium. Ultimatum does look like it has strong yields in the north. Um, it is a bracketed figure, 103%. That put it 3% ahead of X stage and 4% ahead of palladium. There is uh, a market for group two in the north, particularly in the northeast of England. Um, so for growers up there, this could be an interesting variety. The grain quality um, looks OK. Hagberg is very similar to X days and a little bit weaker than palladium. Specific weight is strong, uh, 79.6, better than X days and well ahead of palladium. Protein at a milling spec, so that's grown to a milling um, protocol, 12.3%. Uh, so very similar to palladium, just slightly behind X days. Lodging looks good, um, uh, seven, so um, just below uh, exchange and palladium. It's a little bit later than uh, exchange and palladium, but a plus one, it's not going to be a disaster. Looks like it's, it's potentially suitable for export, and that, that's bracketed at the moment. We need to see more data, um, but that would make it the same as exchange and palladium doesn't have um, a UKP um, trade branding for, for export. Moving on to the disease resistance of ultimatum, uh, mildew is a seven, so the same as X days, one below palladium. Yellow rust is a nine, so very strong in yellow rust, uh, better than X days, the same as palladium. Brown rust is a six, um, similar to um, X days, one ahead of palladium. It is a little bit weaker than both X days and palladium on Septoria, but the 6.4 isn't a bad rating, and a few years ago would have been thought as a very good rating. I spot, as I said, everything's bracketed. So question mark over the I spot rating, but at five, that suggests it's a little bit better the next stage, not quite as good as palladium. Fusarium is a seven, um, so that's obviously an important rating um, for a milling variety. And overall, it's untreated yield. 93% uh, looks a little bit weaker than palladium and also weaker than the next stage, but not bad at all at 93%. Uh, no orange wheat blossom midge in any of these group two varieties. Moving on now to our new uh, UKFM Group 3, our, our biscuit wheat. And again, I'll do yield and quality on one slide and then disease and untreated yield on the next slide. Here I'm comparing it to KWS Brium, which was recommended last year, uh, and Astronomer, um, both are official comparators. Astronomer has a leading, has a leading market share in, in the Group 3s. Uh, Guillaume is the highest yielding um, variety. So in terms of um, East treated yield, it's, it's a marginal improvement, two, sorry, 1% ahead of, of Brium at 102%, um, but 3% ahead of Astronomer. In the West, it's a percent ahead of Brium, 
uh, and 2% ahead of astronomer. And the north, it's a bracketed yield, so limited data, but it looks about the same as Brium, but 3% ahead of astronomer. Hagberg, uh, and grain quality in general, Hagberg looks, looks reasonable, uh, better than astronomer, not quite as good as Brium. Uh, specific weight, maybe a little bit low at 75.4, um, compared with, with Brium and, and astronomer, 78 plus. Um, but the Mellors didn't seem to uh, think that was a problem. Lodging is an eight, so better than Brium, not quite as good as astronomer. It's a little bit later at a plus two, but then the group threes tend to be a little bit later rhyming. And it's been rated as medium for distilling. It does have suitability for export, so it's been given a UKS um, branding, which neither Brium nor astronomer have. So possibilities for extra markets there. In terms of disease resistance, uh, strong on mildew, uh, better than Brium, uh, and certainly better than Astronomer, which is just a four. Slightly weak than the other the comparators on Yellow Rust, but still a seven, so still a good rating. And uh, uh, the five for Brown Rust, that puts it alongside Brium, um, but well behind Astronomer, which is very strong on those rust resistances. Septoria is a 5.5. Uh, none of these groups these really have great um, septoria resistance. Many of them have cougar in their background and saw their resistance ratings come down. Wilkinson doesn't have cougar in the background. It's a Pembroke by evolution by Dickens um, cross. So uh, hopefully that septoria rating will hold up. I spot um, is a seven. It does have PCH1 resistance, so that, that should hold up and that seven should be bracketed. Um, and Fizerum is a six, the same as the comparators. That gives it an untreated yield of 87%, uh, which is better than Brium, um, but very similar to Astronomer. It doesn't have orange wheat blossom mid resistance, which is a little bit unusual for the group threes, uh, but Brium actually doesn't have it either. Moving now on to our uh, soft group fours, um, starting with yield and quality. Um, I'm comparing them to uh, that skyscraper and Bearstow. Um, they're the two highest yielding uh, varieties on the, on the subgroup fours. And they're also our official comparators for the committees. So uh, LG Redwald, LG Redwald just has a recommendation for the East and West. It didn't get a North recommendation, so I've greyed out um, the UK and the North treated yield. But looking at the East treated yield, 107%, very high yielding, 4% uh, of both head, head of both Skyscraper and Bearstone. And the West treated yield even higher, 109%, so 6% higher than both Skyscraper and Bearstow. Uh, a really big improvement in yield. As you can see from the North yield, wasn't as strong there, and it's bracketed, so it hasn't been given a North recommendation. So very high yield. Does it have any weaknesses? Uh, perhaps the Hagberg, 172, so a long way behind uh, Skyscraper and Bearstow, but it is above our minimum standard. A specific weight, 75.5. Uh, a little bit below um, both Bearster and Skyscraper. So perhaps the grain quality is not there. Um, you get the yield, perhaps don't get quite the grain quality. Um, it has been rated as medium for distilling, which is the same as Skyscraper. Bearster has been rated as good. The issue with red rolls, I said if it has a weakness, uh, perhaps it's grain quality. It also definitely has a weakness in terms of lodging. It's only just below the comparators, but it will need some careful management but by uh, looking at um, drilling date, PGR programs, uh, the committee felt that the lodging could be managed, and so with that yield, it was worth recommending. In terms of rhyming, it's a plus two. Um, that's the same as Bearstow. It is late in the skyscraper. Our other new uh, soft group four is KWS Zealum. This has only been given a north uh, recommendation. So we've blacked out, or greyed out, sorry, the, um, the yields for the other regions. So in the north, it's been given a, a bracketed 102%, so it is limited data. That puts it the same as skyscraper and 1% um, below uh, red wall, sorry, 1% below behind Bearstow. Um, skyscraper is, has got by far the biggest um, chunk of the, of the market in Scotland, um, about 44%. So that yield, putting it alongside skyscraper, um, it may provide some competition for skyscraper. In terms of grain quality, Hagberg is very similar to Skyscraper, just below, a little bit more below Bearstow. And specific weight is very similar to Bearstow, just below Skyscraper. In terms of distilling, it's been rated as medium, but actually it was at the very top of the medium, 
um, just below uh, the good category. So I'm sure this is a variety that will be of interest to distillers in the north. Lodging uh, looks like an eight, so good lodging and uh, ripening is a plus two. So um, not, not a problem. Uh, a lot of these group, the soft group fours are quite late in their ripening. In terms of disease, uh, Redwald is a six for mildew, which is the same as Bairstow, just below Skyscraper. Yellow rust is a seven, which is perfectly acceptable for yellow rust. Brown rust is a six, same as Bairstow, best than Skyscraper. And Septoria uh, looks good. It will have the highest Septoria rating uh, for a group four soft on the new list. Um, Fusarium is a six, so the same as the comparators. And the untreated yield. Um, re reflects those good disease resistance ratings of 92%. So that's ahead, or well ahead of Bearstow and Skyscraper. And it does have orange wheat blossom midge resistance. In terms of disease resistance for Zealand, a seven for mildew, uh, so the same as Skyscraper and better than Bearstow. Nine for yellow rust, so a good strong yellow rust resistance. Uh, brown rust is a five, so the same as Skyscraper, not quite as good as Bearstow. Sheptori is a 5.8, which is perfectly reasonable for this group. Uh, they don't have the highest um, highest uh, septoria resistance rating, so 5.8 is OK. An eye spot, question mark, it's bracketed, uh, but it looks like better than the, the skyscraper and the bear stone. Fusarium is a seven, so better than the comparators. And orange wheat, oh, sorry, untreated yield uh, at 86% is very similar to the comparators. So not quite as strong as red um, but still pretty good. And it has orange wheat blossom midge resistance, the same as the comparators. Then finally, moving on to our uh, new hard group four variety. That's Oxford from DSV. And here I'm comparing it to Champion, um, KWS, Dawson and Graham. Some pretty severe competition in, in the group four hards. Um, these are our official comparators for the committees. And Oxford's only been given an east and west recommendation. And you can see why from its north treated yield well below the comparators. So looking at yield, uh, East treated yield, it, yes, it's below uh, Champion, but it's head of Dawson and Graham, and it will be the second highest um, yield um, in the East on the new list. West treated yield, 105%, just below Champion, 1% below the Champion, uh, but similar to Dawson and Graham. And Graham, of course, has dominated the West uh, mar market for, for many years now. As I say, no, no North treated yield because it's not been recommended in the North. In terms of grain quality, um, Hagberg is a little bit lower, uh, but not far behind Champion, uh, somewhere behind Dawson, which we know, of, we know has very good grain quality, and, and a little bit behind Graham. Specific weight is fine, 76%, so that's better than Champion. Obviously, it's somewhere behind Dawson with its very high uh, specific weight, and a little bit behind uh, Graham. And lodging uh, looks like a seven, so it sits in the middle of the comparators. In terms of ripening, it's a little bit later, um, but um, it shouldn't be a problem for, for the East and West. And then moving on to disease resistance. Um, in terms of mildew, it's the same as Graham, um, behind Champion and Dawson. Yellow rust is strong, it's a nine, uh, so better than Champion and Graham, uh, similar to Dawson. And brown rust is good as a six, so better than both Champion and Graham, uh, just below Dawson. Septoria at 6.4, of course, it's the same as Dawson. Uh, behind Champion, it's obviously very strong, uh, and just a little bit behind Graham. And those um, I spot ratings all bracketed, um, so very similar to the comparators. In terms of Fusarium, it uh, looks the same as Champion, a little bit behind uh, Dawson and Graham. And the untreated yields, it is a little bit behind the others, um, but it does have um, orange wheat blossom midge resistance, which neither Dawson uh, nor Graham has. Moving on then to spring wheat. Uh, three new recommendations in spring wheat. It's a relatively small market spring wheat, uh, but some, some new recommendations this year. Uh, all from KWS, uh, KWS Harsum, a new group one, uh, KWS Elysium, a new group two, and KWS Lightum, also a group two. And KWS Kilburn has been removed from the list this year. So looking at these new group ones, of this new group one rather, uh, KWS Harsum, and comparing it here to Laidham, which is the highest yielding on the current list, and Malika, 
um, which has uh, been around for a while, good quality, with about a third of the market um, going to Malika. So looking at treated yield, uh, this is spring zone treated yield, 102%, uh, so that's equal with LADEM, so it'll make equal highest yielding on the current list and well ahead of Malika. Specific weight is good, uh, strong specific weight there, better than LADEM and, and better than Malika. And Hagbo falling number is also strong, just very slightly uh, below the two comparators. Protein content is maybe a little bit low, 12.8, compared to the comparators, um, but the UK FM didn't have a problem with that in giving it a group one rating. And ripening is a little bit later than the comparators at plus one, but certainly not a disaster at plus one. A little bit taller, um, the Leyden, but similar to Malika. And in terms of disease resistance, um, bracketed figures for mildew, uh, seven, which is similar to Leyden, and, and better than Malika. Yellow rust is good at seven, so better than comparators. A little bit weaker on brown rust, though, um, just a five, which is below Leyden and certainly well below Malika. Septoria, which is less of an issue for um, spring wheat, but it's a bracketed seven, which you put it similar to the comparators. And it does have orange wheat blossom ridge, which Malika does have, but Leyden doesn't. Finally, moving to the group two spring wheat. Comparing here to cheese, which is our official comparator, it has about a third of the spring wheat market. And we've got two new varieties, Elysium and Lytum, both from KWS. So Elysium, a treated yield of 105%, so 3% higher than cheese, which will, um, which is a, is a big improvement. Specific weight uh, and, and Hagberg num are good. That specific weight of 80.3 is well ahead of Kachis, uh, very high, and high Hagberg falling number 346, going well ahead of Kachis, which is just 250. Protein content looks good at 13.3%, and it is a little bit earlier than Kachis. Straw length, it's a relatively tall variety. Um, we don't have any lodging data for, from, for spring wheat, unfortunately. Um, we just don't, they just don't lodge um, very much in our trials. Um, mildew, Bracketed, it's an eight, that'll put it the same as Kachis. Yellow rust is better than Kachis at a six, um, but brown rust is not quite so strong, a couple of points behind them. Septoria looks like a seven, but it is bracketed, so we'll wait to see when we have more data, and it does have orange wheat blossom ridge resistance. Pedius lightum, not quite so high in yielding, but it is equal to Kachis. That's very similar to specific weight to Kachis but much better Hagbo falling numbers, so better grain quality. And its protein content uh, looks very similar to Kachis, and so good grain quality and lighten. Ripening is the same as Kachis. Uh, straw length is very similar. Mildew is very similar. Has better yellow rust resistance than Kachis, uh, two points better, uh, but just a point behind on the brown rust. Septoria, it's bracketed at a six, and it does have orange wheat blossom ridge resistance. So summarising the wheat, um, we have a new group two, which brings good high yield, especially in the north, a new group three, which brings good yield in the north and non cougar septoria resistance with potential both for distilling and export. A new soft group four wheat with good grain quality and disease resistance and good prospects for distilling. And a new hard group four with good yield and rust resistance. In the spring wheat, we've got a new group one uh, with a good grain quality and good yield, and some new group twos with high yield and better disease resistance um, for some diseases. So in terms of our overall numbers, um, people often get um, hung up on how many varieties are going on and off. Um, it's, it's a pretty neutral year this year. We did put quite a lot of new varieties on last year, um, but this year it, it's fairly flat with, with 28. Uh, new varieties going on and 26 uh, coming off. So pretty flat in terms of numbers this year. So just to summarise the whole thing, uh, a modest number of new varieties on the 2023-24 list, certainly compared to last year. We're mostly seeing incremental improvements on current varieties, but there have been some significant yield improvements in, air, in some areas, particularly in the north, uh, particularly in oilseed rape. Uh, but also some big improvements for some varieties in other areas uh, as well. 
Disease with our eating to remain a challenge for us in some areas. These dry springs and unusual weather patterns are making it difficult to get good data for disease ratings. Um, so we have seen quite a few bracketed and, and, and some changes uh, in that spring by rinkosporin ratings. But we, we are doing our best uh, to try and ensure that the ratings we get are as robust as possible. And we've had some new information provided uh, to help variety decisions and crop management uh, put into the RL this year. We're always trying to improve what we can do obviously within a very limited budget.